Is it a good idea to bluff when negotiating a deal? Stick around to the end of this video, share our thoughts. So today's video, four building blocks of negotiation. So when negotiating a deal, whether it's to sell a business, whether it's to find business capital, or whether it's really for anything in business or in life in general, these are kind of the four building blocks that we like to work around as we're trying to accomplish the goals for our clients. So the first of these is situational framing. And so when you enter into a negotiation and you sit down, or you're on a phone call, or you're on a Zoom meeting to negotiate for what you want, it makes a lot of sense to frame the entire situation to give basically an overview of where we have been where we are going and why we're here what we're trying to accomplish and what that does is bring everybody to a level playing field because before you sit down you don't know what someone else is thinking you don't know what their objectives are you don't know how they're perceiving kind of the path that's come up to this point and so getting a situational framework that everybody is now in the same frame will at least put everybody into a state of mind at the very least that's conducive towards trying to accomplish something so the next step then is the breakdown of variables so basically okay this is where we were this is where we're looking to go this is where we are and what we are negotiating today is a b c d and e right we are negotiating the value we're negotiating the structure we're negotiating the transition period for ownership we're negotiating what's happening to the company name what's happening to the employees what's happening to the building that they occupy the, the community that they're involved with whatever it may be and whatever you're negotiating you want to both agree on what are the variables that we are negotiating because then it's clear that a these are the things that are important to both parties and if you're missing something that they want to talk about they'll add it into that conversation and b it implicitly says that everything that's not being negotiated today is effectively agreed upon and so as a way of kind of catching everything else it oftentimes is good to say okay what are your issues and if someone says my issues are a b and c well it's implicit that everything else is not inclusive in that right all of the other things are not issues and therefore you've isolated and you've kind of covered everything that's not being discussed. Next is guidance. And when we sell a business, we don't put an asking price on the business. We do not put you know, the specific terms necessary that we're looking for when we're raising capital. We may have an amount of capital that we are looking to raise, but if we're selling a business that's not a purchase price and when we're going for capital, you know, we're looking for the best terms possible, right? What's the, the Howard Hughes quote? How much is enough? Just a little bit more. I remember a mentor of mine, whenever asked, you know, what do you want? He would just say all of it. But what you do want to provide is some level of guidance because people don't want to waste their time. And it actually builds trust when negotiating to tell someone at which point they would be wasting their time. So oftentimes when someone says to us, we're interested in buying this business, but is there a price? What's the expectation? And what we like to say is, well, we're talking to a lot of people. There's a lot of interest. We do want, it is going to be a negotiated process by which everyone's going to be able to submit their offers. And we're going to push and push and see where we can bring this. However, what I would say is, X is the mark in above by which I think there'd be a reasonable conversation and below that yeah, I really don't think it's going to be worth pursuing and people appreciate that right to tell them hey if you're not going to be at least at this you're going to be wasting your time but that does not cap you right because you want it to be a competitive process and so what we find is to give people the lower bound yet not the higher bound is oftentimes an effective means of negotiating price and building a rapport in the sense that you've at least been honest enough to tell someone what would or would not be a waste of their time. And when you save people some element of their time, it almost automatically builds a level of trust. And lastly, the fourth building block is responsiveness. And so a lot of times negotiations are done in real time, but there's always going to be a few elements of it that you say, listen, we've got to go talk to our clients or listen, we have to huddle up and think about this or look, we will get back to you. But what's important is to say, we will get back to you by day and time and make sure you actually do it. Because that's what, again, builds a level of trust and does not deter or take away from the momentum of the negotiations because if you do what you say you're going to do in the time and pacing at which you say you're going to do it, it is a reciprocal obligation there that the other party is likely to do the same and if they do not do the same then you're able to point at them and say listen we're negotiating here we give told you we were going to be back to you by this day and time we did that you told us you were going to be back by this day and time you did not do that so what is the reason why right but it gives you the upper hand and some leverage there and so whatever you say you're going to do relative to a timing perspective make sure you do it and that's why responsiveness is that fourth building block so lastly Going to the opening question of this video is, does it make sense to bluff in negotiating? In our personal perspective, from our experience, is the answer is no. Now, that does not mean you have to give everyone all of the information about everything, right? If you have five offers for a deal uh, in whatever you're doing, and the fifth person says, well, I'm interested, but I wanna know what everybody else offered here, again, 
we defer back to our guidance of, look, this is the same guidance we gave everybody else and this is the guidance you're going to have, but no, that's not information we're going to disclose and no, that's private to the process and we're not going to put anyone at a disadvantage or anyone at a, uh, an isolated advantage. Uh, you know, we don't play favorites in these things. We want the best results for our clients and you know, we may provide broader guidance as things continue to everybody on an equal playing field, but no, we're not going to tell you that information. So omission in the sense of being direct and clear about what you're omitting or what you're not going to share is not bluffing. However, you know, what we do not do is tell somebody, hey, you better be at you know, Z dollars because we already have offers for X and Y if we do not have offers at X and Y. We wouldn't tell people necessarily what we had in any event outside of a broader range or again, updated guidance that everybody would have, but we don't play that hand of cards because if somebody says, you know what, I can't do Y, which was allegedly the high offer, but I can do 90% of Y. If you go back to that person at some point and say, yeah, you know what, we'll do that. The other thing, uh, you know, either didn't exist or, or fell through or, or whatever you tell them, they're going to think you're a liar. They're going to think that you made it up and then every other conversation you have with them through whether it's a signature of a letter of intent all the way through the closing of the deal is going to be second guessed. Whenever you say, hey, this is the line in the sand, we are not going to be on this, they're going to say, oh really? Well, you did that time, right? It, it just, it says something about you and then you're not going to have that same level of, of, of leverage and trust and, and rapport. And what we say to people is, we might not tell you things that you want to hear. We may not tell you things that you like, but we're going to be direct. We're going to be candid. We're going to be honest and we're not going to bluff and we're going to give you guidance and we can give you information and some information we're going to tell you that we're not going to give you. However, we're not going to tell you things that aren't true. And if someone can believe you in that way, then when it does come down to some of the fine tuned points within a deal, when it does come down to kind of some of the last straws, if you will, uh, and sometimes those can be contentious and sometimes those can be things that could implode a deal. If you say to someone, listen, this is the very best that you're going to get here. This is the very best that you're going to see. They'll believe you. And it's important to be able to have those points of leverage at that level of the discussion. And so that's the thought for today. The four building blocks of negotiating, whether it's selling a company, finding a company capital or doing anything else in business or otherwise, situational framing, breakdown of the variables, guidance and responsiveness. And when it comes to bluffing, Better to be tactical in what you say and what you don't say. Better to be tactical and direct in telling someone what you're going to share with them and what you're not going to share with them than making things up or playing any cute games of theater. I hope the week's off to a good start for everyone. God bless. Keep pushing forward. We'll see everyone next time.